Why are we sampling? Let's discuss the importance of sampling during environmental assessments. In recent years, we've been getting better at detecting outbreaks and detecting them sooner. Therefore, the number of outbreaks has increased, but the number of illnesses per outbreak has drastically decreased. Let's look at this phenomenon in the context of listeria outbreaks. Before pulsed field gel electrophoresis and whole genome sequencing, approximately one outbreak occurred every three years with an average size of 70 cases of illness per outbreak. Because there were so many cases, more patients were available to be interviewed, allowing for more data. The food common to these patients could be identified, and the potential source of the outbreak could be investigated. Today, with whole genome sequencing, we are detecting 20 times more outbreaks of listeria, but the outbreaks are smaller with an average size of four cases. With less patients, it is harder to draw conclusions from interviews and pin down a common food source that might be responsible for an outbreak. But what does this mean for environmental assessments? Smaller outbreaks have less patient epidemiological data. We need to consider all sources of data, epidemiological, environmental health, and laboratory data. Now, to identify a food source, we rely more heavily on traceback and traceforward investigations. With whole genome sequencing, laboratories characterize environmental isolates and match them to isolates from patients, allowing public health agencies to determine the source of an outbreak quicker. Environmental assessments can identify persistent pathogens in food facilities. Persistent pathogens can result in many illnesses across many years. Pathogens can persist in facilities for weeks, months, and even years. For example, this table shows you the results of a study conducted in a smoked seafood facility that was visited multiple times with six weeks in between each visit. Samples taken were analyzed with DNA fingerprinting and they found the same listeria, 1039C, marked with a star, in drains in all three visits and in finished products in the last two visits. This pattern can also be found in retail. In this example, samples were collected from 30 dailies for over nine months to look for listeria monocytogenes. Once found, the bacteria were characterized with PFGE another DNA fingerprinting method, and they marked the different listeria with different colors. Over nine months, the blue listeria was found every single time the deli was sampled, except September. Now let's discuss how environmental assessments during outbreak investigations are different from routine inspections. The main difference is that inspections have to prevent future public health issues, while environmental assessments identify the source of a past or ongoing outbreak. The goals of an environmental assessment during an outbreak investigation are to find isolates for whole genome sequencing and be able to identify contributing factors if a facility is responsible for an outbreak. During a routine inspection, it's not uncommon to find listeria, even in well-managed facilities. Follow-up actions are determined by the overall prevalence and product contamination risk. During an outbreak investigation, the presence of an isolate in a facility that has a genome sequence that matches an isolate from a patient and has supporting epidemiological evidence suggests that the facility caused an outbreak. But what if the pathogens found do not match? During an outbreak investigation, if a pathogen is found in a facility but it does not match the isolate from a patient, the facility will still need to perform a deep clean and sanitize and conduct follow-up activities. These activities depend on the pathogen and location where the initial positive result was found. Repeating the visit and sampling two to four weeks after initial positives may be appropriate to ensure control measures worked. Resampling should be conducted more quickly if the initial positive was found on a food contact surface. When you perform an environmental investigation, remember that nowadays, with more smaller outbreaks, we have to rely more heavily on environmental and laboratory data. An environmental investigation aims to identify the source of a past outbreak. 
Most facilities struggle to eliminate persistent pathogens, so even if you go weeks or months after, you may still find the source of an outbreak. Now you are in the right mindset to conduct an environmental investigation.